In this lecture, we're going to talk about Gibbs free energy, which is delta G, and this is the amount of energy that is available for a system to do uh, some sort of mechanical work. Now, the equation for delta G, I'm going to introduce the equation, which is uh, the delta G or Gibbs free energy is basically equal to the enthalpy uh, minus T delta S. Now, I'm going to explain to you one by one what uh, enthalpy is. Enthalpy is the amount of heat. Uh, uh, that is evolved in a reaction and we're talking about chemical equations so it's the amount of heat evolved in the reaction it could be a net output of heat energy or a net input of heat energy due to the uh, due to bond fission and bond formation whenever a chemical reaction occurs there are bonds being broken and the bonds being formed so heat would be evolved so enthalpy is the amount of heat that is evolved in a particular reaction now this term T delta S, we're going to talk about this term T delta S. T delta S as we discussed earlier is the amount of work that is, uh, so it's the amount of work uh, that is output or it could be the amount of work input. Uh, it depends on the sign so it could be, it could be input as well so it's the so it could be input as well. So it's the amount of work output or input due to entropy change. So whenever, so due to entropy, entropy change. And previously we discussed uh, this formula where T delta S came from. So it's, uh, it's the amount of work that is output or input due to entropy change. And we said that if delta S is positive, then there would be there would be a net output of work and vice versa if delta s is negative in a chemical reaction then there would be a net input of work so whenever there is a chemical reaction there are two ways a system is producing energy one is the enthalpy change or the amount of heat that is evolved and the other part is the entropy change. If there is a change in entropy, then there would be an output of work or an input of work depending on the sign of entropy change. So based on this equation, we can come up with two things. One is that a system could either produce heat or absorb heat or based on the entropy change, it could produce work or absorb work. So uh, we can come up with two points. One point is that exothermic reactions so whenever the reaction is exothermic which means uh, that exothermic reactions having delta H less than zero they would tend to be more spontaneous because they don't need energy they don't need to absorb energy so they would be they would tend to be more spontaneous and the other thing that we discussed previously was that that a system that produces work and a system that produces work would have entropy change, it, its entropy change would be positive. Whenever entropy change is positive, that system would tend to produce, that system or chemical reaction would produce work. So since it's producing work, that reaction would also be more spontaneous because you don't have to do any work on it. So that reaction would also be tend to be more spontaneous. So reactions would tend to be more spontaneous if they produce energy or heat or if they produce work based on the entropy change. So I'm going to take this example of a combustion reaction of ethanol and I've given you the equation, it's a balanced equation with ethanol which is a liquid uh, combust with oxygen produces carbon dioxide and water vapors. So this is the reaction that's happening and we know that the enthalpy of this reaction is um, it is an exothermic reaction because all combustion reactions are exothermic. So exothermic reactions would tend to be more spontaneous. And if you look at the entropy change, there are less gaseous molecules in the reactants and there are more gaseous molecules in the products, which would mean that the amount of gas is increasing. Hence, this system will have a delta S which is positive. Whenever, whenever delta S is positive, there's a net output of work. So if you if you look at this reaction, You'll notice that enthalpy is uh, exothermic, so that is negative, and there's a net output of work. So this quantity over here, this entire quantity with the negative sign, because delta S is positive, this entire quantity is also negative. So both your terms, 
are negative and if both of your terms are negative then give free energy that is delta g that is the amount of energy that uh, the net amount of energy that is freely available to a system for mechanical work that would come out to be negative which means that this system has an excess of energy and it's going to it's going to produce energy both in terms of heat so the enthalpy is negative and also in terms of output of work so it's going to there's going to be a net output of work and there's going to be a net output of heat as well so delta g is negative that gives free energy is negative so there's a net output of energy or work and this system would uh, this reaction would tend to be spontaneous because it doesn't need any amount of external work done or any amount of external heat based on the gift free energy we can come up with three things one is that if delta g comes out to be negative that means that the reaction is going to be spontaneous uh, no external work is needed or heat is needed instead there's either going to be an output of heat or an output of work done uh, vice versa so uh, if delta g comes out to be positive that means that the reaction is not going to be spontaneous it's going to be a non spontaneous reaction because some external work would be needed or some form of heat would be needed by the reaction so as long as that is not provided that reaction would not occur and if delta g comes out to be equal to zero then that would mean that it's a reversible reaction so so gives free energy is the total amount of energy that is avail available for mechanical work or a system could output it in terms of work so uh, always remember a negative delta g would mean that the reaction is spontaneous and would uh, most likely occur on its own so let's do another example and this time i've picked this reaction this is simply boiling where water in liquid state is getting converted into steam in gaseous state and uh, i need to figure out at what temperatures is this reaction feasible so if i do this reaction at 150 degrees celsius centigrade then it's going to be a very spontaneous reaction because at 150 degrees centigrade water is generally in gaseous state so if you have any liquid water you put it in 150 degrees centigrade that would spontaneously change into gaseous state so at 150 this reaction is very spontaneous uh, what about this reaction occurring at minus 20 degrees centigrade at minus 20 it's very obvious that this reaction would not take place so it's going to be a non spontaneous So it's going to be a non-spontaneous reaction. Now this, these two terms, figuring out at what temperatures this reaction is going to be spontaneous or at what temperatures this reaction is going to be non-spontaneous, this is very, very obvious. And I'm now going to use Gibbs free energy equation to figure out whether this reaction needs a high temperature, whether it needs a low temperature. So I've written down the Gibbs free energy, which is delta H minus T delta S. And now I'm going to use that to figure out whether this reaction is spontaneous or not spontaneous. So I know that delta H, when you're boiling, it's an endothermic reaction. So delta H, this term over here, is positive. And if you look at the entropy change, liquid turning into gas, so the disorder is increasing. That means delta S is positive. So this term over here is positive. Now both of my terms delta h is also positive and delta s is also positive so let me uh, so it's basically minus t multiplied by something which is positive so i've so i've instead written this down i've uh, delta h is positive and my t delta s is also uh, my delta s is positive so minus t delta s would be a negative quantity so this makes this term negative so this term this entire term actually becomes negative now i know i want delta g to be less than zero for this reaction to occur so this entire term is the negative part this entire term is negative so if i want delta g my overall uh, the sum of the two terms if i want delta g to be negative to be if it's negative that means that the system has available work or it can output work so if delta g is negative that would mean that the reaction could occur on its own so one term is positive and the other term, although it is positive, but minus T delta S makes it negative. So since that term is negative, I want a bigger negative term and a smaller positive term. So I want this term, my positive term to be small compared to my negative term, which should be as large as possible. 
only then can delta g be less than zero so for that to happen i need a very large t if i keep temperature very high if i use a very large value of t then this entire term would become very large and my negative term would increase in size if my negative term increases in size that would make delta g the overall term negative so this means that to make delta g less than zero t should be kept very high so temperature should be as large as possible so based on this equation i've been able to figure out that having a larger value of t would make this reaction more spontaneous and this was very obvious that at 150 degrees centigrade the reaction was spontaneous whereas at a lower temperature minus 20 degrees centigrade it was non-spontaneous let's look a sim look at another similar reaction where liquid uh, water is freezing into water and uh, solid water so liquid water is changing into solid so it's freezing and we know that enthalpy for this reaction is uh, negative. It's an exothermic reaction. Liquid water is going to lose heat. And entropy is also negative. Entropy change is also negative. Which, uh, so you can, uh, you can look at the reaction and see that uh, liquid is changing into solid. So disorder is decreasing. So enthalpy, uh, entropy change for this reaction is negative. So both the terms are negative. I'm going to use uh, Gibbs free energy. To figure out whether this reaction would be feasible at high temperatures or low temperatures and it's pretty obvious that freezing occurs at a very low temperature this reaction would be spontaneous if you do this reaction at minus 100 degrees centigrade but if you do this reaction at a 1000 degrees centigrade, centigrade temperature then this reaction would not be very spontaneous it would actually never occur so it's going to be completely non-spontaneous at that temperature so we're now going to look at that particular reaction So let me write down the expression for delta G, which is uh, delta G is equal to delta H minus T multiplied by delta S. Now in this particular reaction, delta H is already negative. So this term, one of your terms is negative. And then you have minus T temperature multiplied by delta S is negative. So that term is also negative and that what that would do is that this negative sign over here and this negative sign over here they would cancel out and that would make one of the terms positive so in this particular case this term over here becomes positive because two negative signs multiply with each other and become positive so so one of your terms this side is positive and the other enthalpy change term is negative. Now to have delta G coming out to be, delta G needs to be, an overall delta G value needs to be negative. So to make it negative for a spontaneous reaction, the negative term must be larger compared to the positive, positive term. And the only way this positive term could be smaller is that if you use a smaller value of temperature so if you use a smaller value of temperature this term this positive term would become smaller the negative term would become bigger and the overall value of delta g would then become negative so this is so we wanted delta g to be less than zero to be to be negative only then would the reaction be spontaneous so you are going to use a smaller value of temperature and that was very obvious from the reaction that a smaller temperature value would be more feasible for this reaction. This reaction would be spontaneous at minus 50 degrees centigrade but non-spontaneous at 1000 degrees centigrade. So, so we have used this uh, gift free energy equation to figure out whether we are going to keep a smaller T or a larger tip value of temperature. Now based on the above examples, uh, the equation delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. You uh, can qualitatively figure out whether the reaction is non-spontaneous or spontaneous. If delta G is less than zero, then that reaction would be spontaneous. If delta G is greater than zero, then the reaction would be non-spontaneous. So I've made this table. So if your enthalpy is negative and your entropy change is also negative, that would mean that delta G would only be less than zero if uh, you, you keep a low temperature. Similarly, if enthalpy is positive,
enthalpy change is positive and entropy change is negative then delta g is always going to be greater than zero the reaction would be non-spontaneous so we can um, enthalpy positive means that heat would be absorbed by the reaction entropy change negative means that work done would be on the system so in both cases uh amount of work would be done on the system so delta g uh, is going to be greater than zero there's going to be a net input of work uh, so the reaction would be non-spontaneous because it would require an external help uh, in this third box over here delta h is negative and delta s is positive so the entropy change uh, uh, is positive delta g is always going to be less than zero and the reaction would always be spontaneous and uh, the, the fourth box is uh, that delta H is positive and delta S is also positive. So, the, so delta G would be less than zero only at high temperatures. So I have two boxes. Uh, in, in two boxes, in these two boxes, one over here and one over here, the reaction in this first box, this box over here, second box from the right, this would always be non-spontaneous, whereas this would always be spontaneous whereas uh, in these boxes uh, spontaneity would depend on the temperature of the reaction this box low temperature the reaction would be spontaneous and in this box at high temperature the reaction would be uh, spontaneous